that it's a woman's world And he's so glad it is For when it's hers, it's his It's a woman's world But only because it's benefit of those of you who do not recognize what you are seeing, this is New York. Heel to the snob in everyone. This is the car I manufacture. The Gifford. Gifford. As you see, it is a convertible. It has been designed to convert your bank account into our dividends. Yes, but you also can't. You better take every opportunity you have to be nice to it. With five days of social life in New York, it may talk back to you. No matter what you think, Liz, this isn't social, it's business. One of us is going to get that Briggs job. That's the reason Gifford invited me. So I've got one small answer. It'll be over in a month. Mm-hmm. Look, Liz, we're coming back to New York. Where we met, where we got married. For five days, couldn't we just pretend that I can understand how a poor, lonely girl could be led astray in a suite like this. Hmm. Why are we here? Yes, I know. But are they thinking of promoting you? Well, now, what's wrong with being promoted, hmm? Well, I mean, promoted here to New York. Now, what would you think of that? Well, I think that was terrible. Well, then, let's not think about it, hmm? Come in! <laughs> Mr. Baxter? That's right. Flowers for some flowers. Thank you. This is where I belong. And don't say yes, sir, to Mr. Gifford. Just address him as Mr. Gifford. Hmm? Yes, Mr. Baxter. And don't you worry. Don't worry, he says. Pretend to listen. One martini, three sips. Be sure to mingle. Don't relax. Speak up. Be quiet. No, Mr. Gifford. Yes, Mr. Gifford. What do I do if somebody invites me to step out of my cage? Hmm? So much Joe, she practically knows you. Oh, yes. Have you moved from St. Louis? St. Louis? Uh, no, darling. Mr. Wilkinson is general sales manager here in New York. The only Wilkinsons you've ever mentioned to me live in St. Louis. Oh, no, honey, those are the Wilkins. Could you use a drink, Mrs. Baxter? Oh, yes, I could. Right over here. He's making a forward pass. I, uh, I think I ought to say hello to Mr. Gifford. Well, so should I, I suppose. Go ahead, we'll be there in a minute. Drinking yourself stiff. Do I show it? Well, far be it for me to help the competition, but uh, I'll let you in on... Hello, Baxter. Hi, Mr. Gifford. Mrs. Talbot, may I present Mr. Burns? How do you Mrs. do? Mr. Talbot. And Mr. Baxter. How do you do? How do you do? And will you gentlemen please identify Mrs. Burns and Mrs. Baxter for me? Uh, this is Mrs. Burns. Uh, how do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Burns? No, you're Mrs. Baxter. Oh, yes, I'm Mrs. Baxter. Oh, yes. How do you, do you do? Then, uh... Uh, you must be Mrs. Burns. <laughs> well, Mr. Gifford. No one was listening to me, thanks to this uninhibited young beauty. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, no, not sir. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Gifford. Please. <laughs> you think she's making a play for Gifford? Oh, let's be charitable. Let's just say she's interested in that Briggs job for her husband. Oh, well, go easy, darling. No, I'm all right. I was just trying to drink with my fingers crossed. Is that a local custom in Kansas City? No, Mr. Gifford. I was just making a wish. Let's hope it comes true. 
Well, that sort of depends on you. Anything in my power. Well, I just wish you wouldn't give Bill a job. Well, nothing, honey. Let's just skip the whole thing. Did I say something They terrible? say, Mrs. Baxter, that if you tell your wish, it doesn't come true. I'm going on get her tonight. Well, you won't go after the job. You even act as if you didn't want it. Sure I want it. So does Burns, so does Baxter. Now we've got to perform for the master. Got to try to catch each other off balance with one smug little show of superiority that'll knock out the other. I'll get to the top. But I'll get there on what I've got, not what you've got. You made Gifford believe it. Oh. You really did a solid job. Do you mind if I comment on your job? That Gifford seems to be a very sharp cookie, and he might notice that you're trying too hard, just a little too hard. Why was what I said so terrible? Which one? Well, you know, when I said, Mr. Gifford, my wish was that you wouldn't give Bill. You know, even those people from Texas and Philadelphia looked as though I dropped a bomb. And the look on your face was a city before we came here. You know why. Yeah, I'd have been scared to death. And I wouldn't have come. That's just it. Hey, wouldn't this look nice on you? You mean in public? Sure. <laughs> Bill, you would want the children to... Just like a play I saw on television. No, two plays, the same night. I love you. The Public Library. That was lovely to furnish us with such a tactful and entertaining escort. We wouldn't know about that. Oh, now please, ladies, I am not worth it. Well, Mrs. Talbot can use you for practice until she gets a chance at that old string bean Gifford again. Don't repeat that to your uncle. Oh, he can tell his uncle as far as I'm concerned. Tell his aunt. Katie, you're getting the roof of your mouth sunburned. <laughs> Some of the men have been here ever since the plant opened. My father knew every one of his workers by name. Yes, he used to call me Sid. What's that? I said your father used to call me Sid. Really, Mr. Bird? You should be proud you worked your way up through the plant. Yes, sir, I am. How on earth did you ever stand the noise? There's nothing about an automobile that we're not working on. Have any of you gentlemen ever thought of an improvement that would sell more Giffords than... Some of it. How about yourself? Do you think you have it? <sighs> well, there are a lot of days when I'm... I'm sure I haven't. And then there are days when I'm positive I have. How can I be sure whether or not you have this X plus Talbot? Or Baxter or Burns? I'll be a little better now. Which leaves me even more confused. Now, shall we go to lunch? Tonight, Tony suggested the pavillon. You better shave. Pavillon? I never heard of it. You will. A perfect setup for anybody that can make sense. Now, Aren't you forgetting about your ulcer? I'm sorry, you asked me a question, I was just trying to answer it for you. If you're not interested. Forgive me. For the moment I forgot about the job and was interested in you. If you. Hmm. I didn't know that either. Well, if you wanted Mr. Gifford to think that we're the. I am positively not it. <laughs> well, darling, compared to me, you're a career diplomat. Uh -uh. What'd you do? <laughs> well, I have a suggestion. Why don't we have dinner right here in the suite and call up Kansas City and talk to the children? Oh, great. Brown, have you picked your man for the job yet? No such luck. Right man, wrong wife. Right wife, wrong man. Available. And you know, my dear, it's... Ernest, just what is it you want me to do? Nose is pressed against the window. Everything's gone up since then. Liz, when you left the hotel, I... Are you gonna sit here? 
Yes, if you don't mind. It's all right. He's my husband. You know, my wife and I used to... Is he still around? Yeah, he's the boss now. <laughs> Is that right? I'd like to talk to him. I'll tell him. Thanks. No cocktail, honey. No. He got married. No, I don't mean that. Do you wish to see me? Hello, hello, hello. Bye, next. <laughs> Giovanni, due pranzi. Un spaghetti, un ravioli, due antipasti. Uno con doppio di peperoncini. Okay. Just like our wedding night. You see? I remember. Well. Double order of peppers for you. Ah, thanks, Tommaso. I'm going to serve you myself now. You take a spaghetti and you take a ravioli. No, Tommaso, it's just the other way around. Of course, that's the matter <laughs> with me. Come and arrive. Murder. Just murder. You knew this was going to happen. Why did you have to eat that Italian dynamite? I'm not... at that. What is it? Invited to Mr. Gifford's place on Long Island for the weekend, and we're leaving tomorrow afternoon on his yacht. For the weekend? Yeah, isn't it? Oh, hello? Uh, yes, Mr. Kleiner. Oh, I, I see. I know I can come over right away if you like. I wouldn't be human if I didn't, honey. It's the top job in the whole organization. Of course I want it. Okay, Bill, then I want you to have it. If you want it, then I want it, too. Gee, and if my ideas for that campaign are really good, and if you knock them for a loop this weekend, you got that dress, huh? No, not that one. Well, tell I me got... about it later, honey. I'll see you in about an hour. Bill! Hey, Bill! You forgot something. And what I want to talk to you about is, you see, Bill suggested that I ask you to help me to shop. Why me? Well, he said you have a very sharp eye for clothes. That's a compliment that husbands seem to pay all wives but their own. <laughs> well, it's important to Bill how I look on this trip. And what's important to him is important to me. Well, there's only one answer to that, I hope. Come on. Where are we going? Well, it's a joint where they sell odd lot leftovers. And if you're lucky, sometimes you can pick up an exclusive that's been worn by a model. Oh, yes, I remember now. It's something terrible. It's a size 16. Well, buy it and let's get out of here. Well, I'm an eight. It doesn't matter, Katie. Maybe it's a small 16. Go try it on. Oh, okay. Sadie, where's that pink coat? I went out and bought a pink dress to match it. Now I can't find it anywhere. Let me do it. Well, you haven't said anything to Mr. Gifford yet. Well, it'll have to. Just by not trying, I can eliminate myself. That way, I won't offend him. I better go look for her. Mr. Gifford, we're getting off course. Oh, then you... Mrs. Andrews, my sister, Tony's mother. Ernest, don't explain me. Just introduce me. Mr. and Mrs. Baxter from Kansas City. How do you do? Kansas City. How nice. And Mrs. Burns from Philadelphia. I love Philadelphia. How do you and, do? Uh, By the way, um, Mrs. Burns, will you play hostess for a few minutes? With pleasure. I get clumsier every year. It's a good thing I'm out here where I can't get at your best furniture. Come this way. Besides, I'm sure we both are aware that we happen to be living in a man's world. You haven't any children, have you, Mrs. Tom? Gosh, all this trouble and then having to leave your guests. Trouble, it's a relief. I'm always nervous at first with strange people. You're just saying that to make me feel... That's at your expense, of course. 
and you must convince him you're perfectly content. Oh, but I'm used to being alone. You know, Bill travels a lot as the district manager. Then, of course, I have the children. They're growing up. You wouldn't have so much time for the children. You'd have social obligations. You'd have to be saying nice things you didn't mean to people who were and screaming. Mm. I know. Years ago, I served my time as the wife of the general manager of Gifford Motors. I'm not to be your decision. Your wife must never compete with the company. If there's a choice between your work and your wife, your work must come first. Do you agree, all of you? Well, I don't, Mr. Gifford. If a man's job and his home life interfere with each other, there's something wrong with the man. Or the wife? Under the conditions I've outlined, do you think you could handle this job? Handle it? Mr. Gifford, I'd give my eye teeth for the chance. But I can't turn it down. I had the chance this afternoon to tell Gifford I didn't want it. I couldn't. Why not? Get someplace. When they took me out of the factory and started me selling cars, I, I knew I couldn't stop trying till I got to the top. And there was Gifford this afternoon laying it right in my lap. Asking me if I could handle it. The t I know that. I, I try to do something about it, but something just keeps pushing me on. Can't you see, Liz? Yes, I see. Baxter said one thing today that made sense. He, he said that a man's job and his home life ought to be separate. One, one shouldn't interfere with the other. I could make it like that with us, Liz. Baxter could make it that way. Not you. No. No, I guess not. Now. Katie. Katie, you're beautiful. But do you suppose I can get Mr. Gifford to unglue his eyes from Mrs. Talbot? If you do, I'll break his jaw. Bill, this time I did it on purpose. Why did you do that? Well, I wanted a chance to talk to Mr. Gifford's sister. And it worked. What kind of things, honey? All things like how to be one of the social circle and, and how to get used to not seeing so much of my husband. Well, how would you feel about that? Oh, I'd feel fine. I think it would be just wonderful if you were the general manager. Honey, you said that a bit too loud. Too loud? Yeah. What if I said I don't want the job? You don't... Oh, Bill, anything you want. I mean, anything you don't want if you really don't want it. Katie, don't. I'd like to see us all sit up on our hind legs and beg. Well, he's got to make up his mind soon. Yeah, well, he's going to spring the big news tonight, right after dinner. Oh, I'm sure it'll be you, Jerry. I don't know. But I can promise you one thing. Yeah? Things very clearly. I must do something if I can. Come in. I can. I'm sorry. I was told you'd be alone, Mr. Gifford. The fact that he won't try to sell himself, that he isn't aggressive enough. I don't wish to be too specific. Except to say definitely that Jerry is out. I'm sorry. Have a maid. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Do you suppose that Latham gave you the Dallas agency just because you sold a few second-hand cars? Medicine, but unfortunately she left it at the hotel. Will she return? No. Tony. Yes, sir? Tony, remind me to send flowers to Mrs. Talbot in the morning. That won't be necessary, Mr. Gifford. No, I guess it won't. Thank you. Evelyn, I must compliment you. That was an excellent mousse. Isn't anyone else going to try the dessert? Oh, I couldn't eat another bite. Tonight against you. I was convinced that you were not aware of this handicap, and I wanted to call it to your attention. An opportunity came my way that gave me a chance to do so. I can only guess at the results, but this much I know. That suddenly you did become aware of it and have the courage to... Listen, these people are starving. You may start serving dinner again. Ladies, gentlemen. You must be ready. Jerry, you sit here. Oh, I'm sorry. Sid, remind me to tell you. One moment, please. 
May I propose an after-dinner toast new to keep me wealthy? <laughs> and to these lovely ladies, already wealthy and charmed because men are in it. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>